So this video, I'm going to debunk the flat earth. This video is specifically for flat earthers. Uh, I'm going to put that in the title, but I don't know who's going to accidentally get this video from a random play or whatever, you know, so I thought I'd establish that in the beginning. The reason I'm going to make this video a um, video specifically for flat earthers is because of the way I'm going to sort of lay out the information and give a little background information on why I'm doing this. Because I am well aware that if you are a flat earther and you're watching this video, it's very likely that you don't mind sitting through a video that's a little lengthy because you're going to be sitting... <laughs> I feel certain you've sat through hours of, you know, other documentaries with, you know, Eric Dubé and ODD and Jaronism and Rob Skiba and all those wonderful flat earthers. Mark Sargent, can't forget about him. First off, let me establish, I am not a flat earther. Obviously, this video is about debunking the flat earth. But for some reason, every single time I bring up the subject of flat earth, people start... Uh, they don't hear the part where I say I'm not a flat earther. They're just like, oh, the flat earth. Yes, it's it's a, actually a fun little subject to talk about, um, which is why I enjoy it. But anyway, so I actually got into the flat earth conspiracy back in 2015 before, uh, before YouTube purged something like over 100,000 channels for a variety of reasons. They did another purge back in December. I think it was something like 40 to 60,000 channels were purged. So we're talking, you know, 150, 160,000 channels that, you know, not all of it's going to be obviously conspiracy based, but there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that's been thrown out in sort of like this grand sweep of let's just get these crazy people and misinformation out of there and so you know a lot of a lot of channels were lost but i still see debunking flat earth videos and i still see um you know uh, flat earth people just made a documentary that was just released the other day you know and they all sort of collaborated on it it was a lot of the big names which was it, it, I always enjoy watching those. So I got into Flat Earth in 2015, and something that I found interesting was how I got into Flat Earth was the exact way I got off of the Flat Earth. And one of the big things is star trails, okay? And so along the bottom of the video, I'm going to sort of showcase this 3D thing, 3D, this graph thing I made to show what star trails look like from our perspective. And so they'll have, I'll have one uh, angle sort of pointing at the north, what, it, what the spin looks like at the north, what the spin looks like at the middle, and what the spin looks like at the south. What I'm trying to do here is when I got into the flat earth conspiracy theory, I think I do what most people want to do, and that was to debunk it. And the premise of debunking flat earth is actually very simple. It's, it's you got to debunk flat earth without using the authority or any authority. So let's no NASA pictures, no uh, pictures out of your textbook. You know, you can't use your iPhone, Earth wallpaper type of deal. The idea to debunk the flat Earth legitimately is to find a way to debunk the theory yourself. No uh, outside help. How would you? How would you debunk the flat Earth if you were just to go outside? How would you prove? Uh, whether it's flat or round by going outside. And that was the whole premise, right? And what I did was I spent about eight months looking into a variety of things. When you're when you're trying to say, okay, let's not talk about pictures, you know, well then, well, what do you got? You got the horizon, you got the sea level, you got people talking about airplanes and looking out the window, you have crepuscular rays and the sun and all that. And I, what I find interesting about this stuff is – you have to be willing to almost disregard all prior knowledge of what you thought you knew about the reality that you're living in in order to attempt to form a new one, hence the flat earth, right? And so when you're trying to form a new reality by throwing out the old reality, there's things that you just miss because the information from the old reality just doesn't compute like it used to. And it's a weird thing to say. <laughs> But it's almost like um, when you start looking into flat earth, it almost becomes like a spell, some sort of mental block that makes it very difficult to see certain things from a heliocentric perspective. And so what I'm doing here in the, in the next minute or so is I'm going to explain how the star trails got me 
out of that Flat Earth spell because the star trails are actually what got me curious about the Flat Earth conspiracy. Um, the idea that these concentric circles don't deviate at all, even though we're going 60 times faster around the sun than, than we are spinning. Now, I know there's a mathematical uh, explanation for it, and I'm not here to, <laughs> to debate that or anything like that. I'm, I'm Asian, but my math is not that strong. I'm not really that worried about it. What I wanted to show you was what I saw in my mind that flipped the switch. Because there was a moment when I, when I really comprehended what the star trails were doing that almost undid all the jargon that Flat Earth sort of throws out at you. Now, before I, I show you this, my, my example would be simply there were other bigger Flat Earther YouTubers, Flat Earth YouTubers that, um, that sort of turned their back on the Flat Earth, you know. Um, well, that's kind of mean, but they didn't really, they did, but they didn't. So there was one guy called uh, Flat Earth Asshole. His name is Jake. He's a musician, plays bass out in California. He's, um, he's pretty funny, you know, but he lost a lot of subscribers when, when something switched in his head. You know, he, um, he wasn't able to, to concede that the Flat Earth model was possible because of all these inconsistencies you find in it. And he changed his channel name from Flat Earth Asshole to Jake the Asshole. And his whole thing is trying to debunk conspiracy. I don't know if he's a conspiracy guy or maybe he's just trying new things. Like, I haven't watched his channel in a long time. Last time I saw him, he was eating raw meat, um, doing the carnivore diet thing, you know, which is a lot bigger than you would think. Um, but then there was also another person that I used to watch quite a bit when Flat Earth was growing in 2015, 2016. Her name was Orphan Red. And one of the big Flat Earth arguments was something like water doesn't stick to the ball. And so what she did was she showed you this faucet, a um, stream, stream of water. And, and I forget what kind of electric tool she had. It was something that just gave off a little bit of an electric field. And you saw the stream of water bend towards the electric field. She did that one, and she showed you also about the crepuscular rays. She says, or she showed you how, so the flat earth argument is crepuscular rays diverge from the sky, and they can only do that from a certain, certain distance or whatever, you know, shows that it's, it's closer than it is far, because it's far away, the light would be parallel. What she shows you is crepuscular rays also form right underneath the surface of water. Obviously, the sun is not right above the surface of water, it's above the sky. And so the crepuscular ray effect is a refraction thing. It's a perspective thing, and it's, it's not definitive, okay? The point of saying all that was to say this. Once you're able to see one thing that is, that, that is flawed, it, it's like dominoes. It all just starts not falling apart, but you're just able to see things better. And so I wanted to show this... These are the star trails that everyone is used to. Okay. Now this is a very simple, it, ah, I'm sorry. It goes around in a slight circle, right? You see that going on? I don't want to play it too long. I don't want to copyright strike. All right. So what I want to show is on the bottom of the screen, I should have point, something pointed to the north, showing you what the stars look like pointed to the north. That's this right here, right? Then I have you looking at the equator. That's right here. Now it's hard to see but there's a diverging circle here and a diverging circle here. And that's the equator. And from here is the South Pole. See the sphere forming. It's circling around the, the Southern Pole Star. Now I've seen people try to explain this particular anomaly by, explain, by saying something like, we're in a dome and here's some glass and look at how the glass flips this image upside down and the problem with that is at, at, at bare minimum twofold okay because all of this here let's see if I get all this oh, I don't know if I'm pointing here we go. all this stuff here okay in the image that the people show with the dome is when it gets flipped it gets distorted it gets stretched and it nothing like that happens in in the star trails nothing gets stretched nothing gets distorted Okay, not only that, but because of the way the flat earth map is laid out, it's laid out in a way where all these southern hemisphere countries, if you look south, they would, in a flat earth map, they would be all looking in different directions. Okay, and unfortunately, whenever 
flat earthers bring up star, Southern Star Trails, they almost entirely, almost always ignore Sigma Octanus, which is the closest thing to a Southern Pole Star. What I find interesting about this is if you can actually visually comprehend what this arc is, if you can visually comprehend why it's diverging here, if you can see how this particular effect can only happen on a spherical pattern, then it's, things start to sort of, um, they just start to, to click. You're, they're able to see things a little easier. And my, my big thing was once I saw this, I uh, clicked on a Jaronism video. And one of the big claims from Flat Earthers is you cannot travel from Australia to South America. You can't do it. It's a 12-hour it's a flight on a Flat Earth map. It takes at least 16, 17 hours. No one takes the flight. It disappears. So some guy from Australia was just like, oh, you know what? I'll live stream it. And so Jaron and this guy live stream for 10 and a half hours. The guy got from Australia to South America in two hours time, two hours faster than the actual estimated time. And at the end of the video, there was no acknowledgement of the fact that this guy accomplished a trip at least six to eight hours faster than the, what the Flat Earth anticipated. There was no acknowledgement that this guy legitimately sat on a plane for 10 hours. It, uh, the Jaronism Jaren simply went, huh, well, we'll figure it out. Join us next time. And then he just moved right on and ma kept making videos for literal years, never going back to any of this stuff. One time he goes, welcome the Southern Star Trails to the flat earth. And they literally just had this dome that reflected the uh, image. And it's it's like, no, that does that does not center the Southern Star Trails. Because in the model that the flat earthers believe in, the Southern Star Trails would have to, uh, the center of the Southern Star Trails would have to be multiple. There'd have to be one uh, going south, uh, out past South America. There'd be one going south, out past Australia. You know, it's just, it, the, the, there'll be two opposite directions that you, you just can't, you just can't do it. But anyway, if I'm going to link this Monument Valley Star Trails video. This is literally what I saw. Once I understood this, I'm not here to be like, oh, flat earthers are dumb or round earthers are dumb or anything like that. But what I've seen is literally um, just so, so many people that are convinced by something they can't prove. And all I'm saying is this is something you can, this is this is a legitimate piece of information you can look at. I didn't make it. There's plenty of photographers that can do this. I don't know. I just I just think it's 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 not the smartest thing to go all in on something you you can't prove at all. Like you've, you've, you literally cannot prove uh, the earth is flat with this you, or with the star trails. It just that's just not how it works. But this piece of evidence led people like me to start looking into it. And while I was fortunate enough to, to, to see enough information to where I'm like, all right, definitively not flat. I, you know, I'm watching the documentary the Flat Earthers just made. And I think it's interesting because so much of the Flat Earth stuff relies on the uh, moon hoax thing moon hoax conspiracy it's, it's it's very interesting how how tightly those two are joined together but if you look at the comment feed just so many people are like this hits home with me this is exactly what i want to see or or this is amazing or i'm gonna you know i need to share this with people and it's and it's i mean while i think everyone should be open-minded enough to look at whatever new information that goes against their worldview to maybe give them a different perspective on something it, it is important to have an open mind it is also important to have a critically a critically thinking mind, and it's invaluable not to go with the herd mentality. Anyway, um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I hope no one found this offensive. I was definitely not trying to be offensive. Trust me, you wouldn't know if I was trying to be offensive. <laughs> thank you.